Hey guys, I'm Mr. Slayer Genie here, aka Mustache Tom, and I'm here to review the documentary movie, The YouTube Effect. If you end up enjoying this review, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out those links in the description, and one will head you over to my petition to help out smaller YouTubers. So, I'm going to third to my Patreon and PayPal, where you can help support me and my channel directly, and fourth to my Discord server, you can join, collab, and chill, and do all that cool stuff. And chilling will be reminded at the end of the review. With all that out of the way, let's get into the YouTube effect. So, uh, obviously, this is probably going to be one of my more biased reviews, uh, uh, because I'm a part of the YouTube, uh, system. Uh, but this is more of a YouTube, uh, documentary. So, when I came across this, this came out relatively recently. It's not a new, new thing, but... I digress. Uh, point being is that there are a few events that this movie does not cover that I'm a little bit baffled and ashamed aren't covered in this documentary. And I'll get to those in a bit. But this movie slash documentary does go over the history, or most of the history, of YouTube. That being a uh, the biggest website uh, that has uh, ushered in the video space of all time, and that uh, space was started in 2005, officially. And we see uh, there's uh, the co-founder of YouTuber, uh, I believe his name was Steve Chen, talking about uh, the advent of its creation, and Henry Ford, it also makes a, a brief uh, mention of uh, talking point about how people, uh, you know, how people to, of today's world wouldn't be able to sit, understand, uh, you know, the restraints uh, that used to be in place uh, and how wild uh, that those days were back then. So, the movie does chronicle uh, a quite a few interviews, uh, including the very first uh, video that was made by a creator called Jaweed Karim, uh, and uh, we start to get into uh, some of its other content creators, such as Smosh, uh, one of the earliest content creator team-ups. Uh, and sort of this initial appeal to, uh, uh, you know, uh, posting online. Uh, and that seems to be the uh, initial sort of, um, you know, vibe. And uh, the history follows uh, chronologically going to the next year, saying that it only took within that year for uh, Google to buy up YouTube, and this is interesting because uh, we know that now, obviously in hindsight, uh, but back then this was seen as a very poor investment, and we have seen that it's probably one of the best invest investments Google has probably made ever, if anything, uh, quite frankly. Uh, and, of course, one of the previous uh, long-running CEOs, Susan Rojowski, uh, also mentions uh, her experiences with working with YouTube. Uh, and this movie is that recent that it even uh, uh, refers to her as the previous uh, you know, CEO of YouTube. So, this is a very, very recent documentary. Uh, and th as the movie follows uh, this, uh, t these talking points, it shows how much of this investment has uh, really come forward uh, when, again, a lot of people thought it was going to uh, essentially be a failure. And we see that uh, these three individuals from the team got paid out really big from said investment. And as early as 2007, we have billions, of, or 
I forget if it's millions or billions at this hardy point, uh, views per day. Uh, and it kind of goes into this whole uh, uprising that happened in Egypt, apparently. Uh, and, you know, how YouTube uh, sort of ushered in this uh, ability to feed into other areas and uh, give them this sort of tech advantage sort of, uh, you know, sensation and we see the prop that you know we see uh some more youtubers propping up from the advent of fred to k-pop as an entire genre that has uh been you know uh, sensationalized by youtube and so on and so forth we have uh certain black creators talking about how uh they got to see themselves uh, it, despite beforehand maybe not having that uh, level of, you know, visibility, as well as ContraPoints uh, being another YouTuber, talking about her own experiences and being an independent uh, YouTuber who blew up essentially as well. Uh, and speaking of content creators going and going back to Smosh, they were one of the first among the YouTubers to start getting paid. So this is when YouTube started to incentivize YouTubers to see this as a job. Uh, and very close in line with, the, with this is where a lot of controversial videos stopped popping up in both the documentary and probably uh, within the timeline and the rise of clickbait simultaneously sort of edging really close to the said controversial videos. Uh, I think that's a very fascinating uh, thing to really think about how controversy and clickbait sort of are tied so close together in terms of said timeline. I find that really fascinating in terms of looking at the history of YouTube, and I mean the full, or at least most of the history of YouTube, if anything. Uh, and speaking of money, uh, 2011 talks about av revenue, which is how YouTubers get paid, and how it has now been sort of shifted to watch time and the start of the algorithm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, for all the YouTubers who have talked about the algorithm, I have mentioned it myself, with the advent of YouTube being a part of said algorithm, uh, I've said this time and time again on my channel, uh, a name such as like the biggest, you know, YouTuber on the platform, at least even now, PewDiePie for example, his literal name is in the algorithm. That is how uh, interweave the algorithm is, is that it can recognize a name because of the search engine of how YouTube and Google sort of interlocked. I already knew that, but some people still like to pretend like they don't understand the algorithm, which really pisses me off. It's like, and sometimes this comes from people who are like, give YouTube advice. It's like, but I don't understand, the, and they were the one, they're the ones who claim like, oh, I don't understand the algorithm. Shut the fuck up. You just want, you just don't want small YouTubers to actually learn anything about the algorithm let's be real that's the only reason they ever say anything of that nature uh, and this uh it in line with uh this we started to see at least uh or we started to recognize excuse me the negative bias of uh people clicking on more and more slash uh you know more and more negative uh, videos, whether that be news related or politics or uh, even reviews of, you know, uh, more and more negative uh, things were being responded to in kind, uh, which sort of, uh, again, to, which we, again, I just refer to it as a negative bias that humans seem to almost inherently have. Uh, with that, we start to see 
uh, how this uh, these hiatuses and uh, other particular this movie does a lot of feature a lot of it, it does feature Smosh, uh, but uh, speaking of uh, one of the uh, uh, people explain how the algorithm sticks to what's relevant and the size of the individual, which I explicitly just pointed out with PewDiePie being the biggest creator. Since he's already he was already big back then, a lot you know that gets put into the search algorithm more and more. So it's more likely that you're gonna get s served up if PewDiePie makes a video, regardless of what it is. If you know if someone made an identical video, say even if it was someone like me, if I made an identical video to say even PewDiePie by somehow. Um, it would recognize his video over mine because his would get his tags and then he, his would get recognized in the algorithm while mine would get, you know, not seen anywhere, essentially. That is, again, how the algorithm works. Um, but... Uh, one of the content creators we start to uh, look into the perspective of is a man, a young man named Caleb, or Caleb, and seeing how uh, the flaws uh, this started to seize up with um, with certain uh, political leanings, uh, the uh, video just downright just says like the alt-right slash Nazi group is like oh okay we're actually addressing that directly uh, and how that pipeline uh, essentially it has the capacity to destroy empathy as well as other things uh, So we start to see how uh, certain YouTubers even were affected. Uh, I mentioned Elliot Roger about him being inspired by YouTube to go on a killing spree or something of that nature. Uh, we get to sh see, speaking of right wing, uh, we see videos about PragerU, which is a university, quote unquote. Um, so it, it definitely shows a lot of these uh, negative perceptions and negative uh, leanings. And we move on from the date to 2014. So we're actually catching up very, very quickly. Uh, and this is where Contra talks about how she didn't sell out. We get even more creators talking. Uh, we get a dimension of Markiplier around this juncture. Uh, as well as a bigger focus on gaming uh, that of course comes in with the advent of Gamergate which the, the documentary does reflect on as well as ElsaGate which uh, for those of you who don't know uh, ElsaGate is when YouTube uh, essentially created a uh, space for younger audiences to essentially uh, watch YouTube videos then people recognize that they could, uh, you know, take in that negative bias and use it to the algorithm's advantage and then they created the uh, harm, you know, the, the very uh, damning videos of like Elsa getting pregnant and so on and so forth. And uh, we see how, you know, uh, the woman who is a part of one of the individual woman a part of the whole controversy of Gamergate uh, be, talks about being doxxed and being threatened so times are very tough and uh, you know how individuals couldn't remove their videos because someone else might have very well posted them things of that nature uh, and Susan on her part talks about uh, how they tried you know to 
do removal to the best of their ability on like copycats or anything of that nature. Uh, and it kind of goes into this, uh, speaking of copyright, spe uh, how there's this uh, skewed perception of about how an individual will be pretty much fucked if they were to go against, say, a big company that is definitely addressed in this part of the documentary as well. Uh, and we continue to see how uh, the Google and YouTube merge has uh, seemingly uh, kind of is seen a little bit more negatively here. Uh, then the the documentary begins to talk about Section 230 and how that protects the website from, uh, you know, essentially getting the blame. Uh, and, you know, that is a, a strong thing to uh, case out, obviously, because individuals are the ones who are making the videos. You know, YouTube is just a sharing platform. I mean, how can they take responsibility if an individual within that, you know, that billions of content creator spread, you know, if it's like, you can't blame YouTube. It's like, what are you doing? And, you know, th there are definitely, it's definitely a taken, um, you know, sort of situation. Uh, the documentary moves to 2016. Uh... And how YouTube has spread at this point with offices around the world. Um, and it talks about how on the right side you see on the YouTube how it, you know, the algorithm essentially tells you uh, these videos that allocate to you, but they are higher ranked still within the algorithm. So despite every algorithm, you know, every you know, uh, person viewing content, um, they're getting fed, you know, the highest form of what they're searching for. For So, for example, if they're looking for gaming, they're going to get the highest ranked gamers in the algorithm versus the small ranked gamers. So, that is essentially what this part, uh, you know, uh, alludes to. And, of course, with it being 2016, this deals with the initial Trump election. And, you know, the, the beginning and advent of false, <laughs> crazy how the, the level, of, level of misinformation that just elevates from this point moving forward is absolutely hilarious, considering uh, where we are even right now. Uh, so that was some time ago, shows how little progress we have clearly made. Uh, we see that Smosh, speaking of one of the content creators who has a lot of time in this documentary, gets to have that one-on-one -on -one discussion with Susan, uh, which was definitely a advent into change. Now, since I don't know when it happens in terms of the timeline, I felt like I should just insert it about one of the things that I feel like, or I'll just save it for the end. Uh, cause I don't know when it ha when it, I don't remember when it happened, but anyway, uh, as I mentioned, uh, it talks about Elsa Gate, which happened significantly later, uh, and it cuts to 2019, and surprise, surprise, there is another shooter, uh, linked with YouTube, and dealing with that outcome. Uh, we get even more content creators like Destiny being mentioned from Caleb and Contra uh, wanting to sort of lean away from this uh, this propaganda that is ver that has been very one-sided. Um, and the, the documentary obviously moves to 2020, which is far... I know that is definitely past the point of something that I wanted to address. But again, I don't remember... I think it was... I want to say it was 2014, maybe. 
But in 2020, obviously, the advent of the coronavirus uh, is what hit, and surprise, surprise, uh, the the conspiracies and misinformation, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, once again, hits once again. We get the bigger versus smaller craters happening again. We have the rise of Black Lives, the Black Lives Matter movement uh, happening, all sort of very close together. Uh, and the documentary has an individual individual talking about how like-minded people could also simultaneously be angry people with the whole negative bias feeding them that level of information and then that sort of cycle sort of you know le leaps in their mind and of course we get the attack on the capital uh obviously uh You know, and we have uh, the individ the owners of YouTube, Twitter, and I believe Facebook, which would make up the three big ones. Um, you know, once again having to speak on the behalf of all of this stuff going down. Um, so yeah, uh, we get to the leaving of Smosh talked about very briefly here. Um, and we have, uh, Susan kind of talking about what's going to come next for YouTube as it, we kind of have caught up, uh, how YouTube has essentially caught up with Google in terms of, like, which one is more used, um, and how... Uh, Jill talks about this sort of connection versus hatred type of content uh, that we are seeing very polarized on YouTube, even in today's standard. Uh, and we sort of see the, the person behind this documentary, Alex Winter, essentially saying that we have been, spree you know, we're speeding towards something. What is that something? We do not know. Uh, so two things that I think that this uh, documentary obviously misses out on and are very important for if you're going to make a documentary about YouTube. The first is a movement that happened and again I want to estimate that this happened around 2014 maybe even a little bit more recently than that but uh, it's called, it was called Where's the Fair Use? This was, uh, in, you know, talking about copyright and, uh, cop you know, uh, individuals' ability to copyright their own material and using fair use via clips from movies to do reviews, uh, you know, a, a sketch comedy, uh, so on and so forth. And why I think this is worthy of being in this documentary and also as well as just being mentioned in general is that out of all of the negative negativity in this documentary uh, that you know spans it and even some of its positivity which I feel like the negative definitely outweighs the positive in terms of YouTube as a whole but despite that where's the fair use I feel like that might actually be in uh, despite uh, you know Outside of looking, outside of looking just at the money aspect of YouTube, I feel like the biggest victory for YouTube in its entire history has to be where's the fair use. It has to be. And of all the movements I have seen, you know, Gamergate was very neg you know, had a very negative perception. Elsagate, very negative perception on YouTube. Uh, Gamergate as well. Where's the fair use? was something that was brought up by content creators for content creators, big and small. And it was to uh, essentially, you know, be like, where's our fair use? Where, you know, this is our content. We are making it uh, fairly within the guidelines that YouTube itself has set up. So where, you know, why are our videos being uh, demonetized, so on and so forth. And so... 
uh, Dog Walker, I Hate Everything, uh, and one other individual, I'm, I'm, try I'm, I'm trying to think of his name right now off the top of my head, but um, essentially they were some of the key uh, starters of this movement and they made their videos on YouTube and that message spread throughout YouTube all the way to the point of spreading to Twitter and so much so that it was actually trending and the reason I emphasize that is that from that point moving all the way back to 2023 we have never been able to do that again. And I ask, if you've made it this far in the video, why the fuck not? It is clear that us YouTubers have a lot more power than I think we think we have currently. And obviously, where's the fair use is proof that we have a lot more power than I think we, you know, think we have right now, you know, it seems to be that even the people that were behind this movement doesn't, don't seem to think that we have that level of power anymore. And I would like to say, I think we can prove that wrong. And I've been saying this for years now, that there needs to be a new YouTube tab dedicated to smaller YouTubers, specifically for smaller YouTubers, newer or just have a slow subscription count. Uh, the reason those two things need to be in play in their own tab is that it can be easier to find them and it's easier for them to grow. As is YouTube, and I'm just gonna say it, it's fairly close to being what I can be considered a pyramid scheme at this point. And I'm not even joking, I wish I were, but that's how dangerous YouTube is in terms of growth. It is just a, it seems like a pyramid scheme. I'm sorry, there's no other way to put it. Um, so yeah, I feel like Where's the Fair Use is a huge missed opportunity for this documentary to fail to mention, considering again, that is one of the cornerstones of where us content creators got a huge win. And yeah, something positive did come from it. Now, it wasn't perfect by any means, and I never thought it would be, but we got something out of it, uh, which has definitely helped to a degree, so there's that. And the other one, which is technically a loss on YouTube's part, which is the whole Copa thing, uh, that being where they had to make the distinction of if you're making content for kids or not. Uh, and that being up to the YouTuber to decide uh, eventually was added on. Uh, it, it's a little bit of a silly thing, I think. But I also simultaneously kind of also understand it, too. Um, but I think when it initially hit, um, there were definitely some people complaining up until they made that distinction that it's, it has, it's just going to be something that's on the content creators. Which, you know, we already have enough <laughs> going on, as is. Um, so... The reason I wanted to make that effort again is to say that uh, I hope that uh, in a part of my tweet about this review will be uh, mentioning where is the fair use and its lack of mentioning and, you know, our ability to recognize that we had that power once upon a time. But outside of those two key events being missing from the documentary, I do think that this is still uh, a documentary worth watching. I would still give it a 6 out of 10 uh, for missing very key events, uh, but uh, at least for a YouTuber, that, it, you know, despite the grade, I would still say I recommend you watching this uh, just to see where the platform came from, where it is, you know, where it was heading in the earlier years, uh, just to get a grasp of all of that information. It does do a 
pretty solid sweep through most of its history, as I kept uh, mentioning over and over again. And that's my review of the YouTube effect. If you ended up enjoying this review, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out those links in the description. I want to head over to my petition to help out smaller YouTubers, so I can third to my Patreon at PayPal, where you can help support me and my channel directly and forth. My Discord server, so you can join, collab, and do all that cool stuff. And until next time, everyone, bye bye.